Let's speak the name, the name above all other names. Let's speak the name, the name the wind and waves obey. All of heaven's coming down at the... Oh, Lord Jesus, speak the name, the name of Jesus. Sometimes I forget the words to songs, but man, glory to God, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Are we waking up glorifying the Lord this morning? I hope so. I hope there is a new praise in your spirit and your soul, a new praise in your mind, a new praise on your tongue. Glory to God. Good morning. This is Lashana Janine Hearn, Enterprise. Uh, Lashana Janine Hearn, A Year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. And we are in 2 Samuel 23 and 24 this morning. And then John 6, 1 through 24. And this morning, I want you to say, the Lord is going to turn it around this morning. Amen. We got to stand in agreement. The Lord is turning it around this morning. Amen. And then say, all things work together for our good. All things. Because we walk in the perfect will plan and purpose of the lord god almighty yes so all things work together for our good you got to speak life you got to speak life and you have the power to make your day great amen all right well let's pray Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we glorify you and thank you, Lord God Almighty, for all that you are and everything that you're doing. For you have a plan. You have a plan. You have a purpose. You have a will. And we ask that you let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and we just glorify and we thank you and we are saying today that we trust you lord god we trust you with everything lord jesus we trust you with our life we trust you with all the plans and everything that we had for our future we we trust you with our future we trust you with our present day we trust you with our health with our heart, with our mind, with our soul. And we just give it all to you, Lord God, for you know what you're doing. You are in control. And we just thank you. We thank you, thank you, thank you. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. And we thank you that you are still continually healing, mending, that you are restoring reviving that you are doing works behind the scenes that we can't even see yet lord jesus and we just thank you and glorify you and we give you all glory honor and praise we pray this in the presence of jehovah and the spirit of jesus yahweh in jesus holy name amen amen good morning Let's give him a clap praise. Oh, I just want to praise the Lord God right now. Just, you know, can we just, can we just clap our hands for the Lord Jesus? Because he is mighty, mighty, mighty. And he is doing, he's awesome, wonderful, amazing. Like there's just not enough words in the vocabulary for us to describe what Jesus is. Amen. So I'm just giving him a hand clap praise. 
And I say, encore, encore, Jesus. Like, give us more. Give us more of your spirit in this day, Lord God. All right, so good morning. If you're just coming on, this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the entire Bible in one year. We are in 2 Samuel 23 and 24. I hope y'all went back and read 22, 2 Samuel 22, those words of encouragement, uh, those words of David. That was, that was very profound and powerful. All right, 2 Samuel 23. Now these be the last words of David. David the son of Jesse said, And the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning, when the sun rises, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with God, Yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure. For this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not to grow. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear. And they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tachmanites that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino the Esnite. He lift up his spear against 800, whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eleazar, Ale Ale the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shema, Shema the son of Agi, the, Hera, the Heraite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop, where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it, and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. And three of the thirty chief went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in an hold. And the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this, 
Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruah, was chief among three. And he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them, and had the name among three. Was he not most honorable of three? Therefore he was their captain, howbeit he attained not unto the first three. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valid man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts. He slew two lion-like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in time of snow. And he slew in an Egyptian, a goodly man. And the Egyptian had a spear in his hand. But he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benai the son of Jeho Jehoiada, and had the name among three mighty men. He was more honorable than the thirty, but he attained not to the first three. And David set him over his guard. Azahel, the brother of Joab, was one of the thirty. Alahanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem. Shammah, the Harad. Haradite, Alika, the Haradite. I hope I'm saying these names right. Helez, the Pal Paltite, Ira, the son of Ikesh, the Tikoite, Abezer, the Anathothite, Mibani, the Hushathite. Zalman, the uh, height, Maharai, the Ne Tophathite, Halev, the son of Bana, Anef, a Ne Tophathite, Ittai, the son of Rebai, out of Gibeah of the children of Benjamin, and Benaiah, the Parathonite, Hidai of the brooks. Of Gaash, Abil Abilbon, the Arbathite, Asmaveth the Bahurumite, Eliaba the Shalbonite of the sons of Jashin, Jonathan, Shama the Hararite, Ahim the son of Shar the Haraite, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> Eliphalet, the son of Ahazbaai, the son of the Maak Athite, Aliam, the son of Ahithophel, the Gilonite, Hezrai, the Carmelite, Pari, the Arbite, Eagle, the son of Nathan, of Zoba. Bani the Gadite, Zalik the Ammonite, Zahari the Berethite, armor bearer to Joab the son of Zura, Ira and Ithrite, Gareb and Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, thirty and seven in all. That was a mouthful. <laughs> Whew. All right. So this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading. If you're just coming on, we are getting through the entire Bible in one entire year. We just read 2 Samuel 23. And now we'll read 24. And that'll be the end of Samuel, y'all. We'll be moving on to 1 Kings. The story of David is one powerful story. Very, very powerful. 
And we can all learn from his story. And know that God is writing your story. Like, writing your story. And, and, and you can go back. Like, everyone should be writing a book <laughs> about themselves right now. Everyone. Because someone can learn from your life. Someone that will come after you can learn from your life, can learn, you know, what to do, when to do, how to do, where to do in certain situations. And so just like they was able to go back and recap of all the things that happened. Amazing. All right, so let's move on to 2 Samuel chapter 24. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. And Joab said unto the king, Now the Lord thy God add unto the people, How many soever they be, a hundredfold, and that the eyes of my lord the king may see it. But why doth my lord the king delight in this thing? Notwithstanding the king's words prevailed against Joab, and against the captains of the host. And Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. And they passed over Jordan and pitched in Aror in the right side of the city that lieth in the midst of the river of Gad and toward Jazer. Then they came to Gilead and to the land of Tatimhadshi. And they came to Dan Jion and about to Zidon, and came to the stronghold of Tiri, and to all the cities of the Hivites, and of the Canaanites. And they went out to the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Joab gave up the sum of the number of the people unto the king. And there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men that drew the sword. And the men of Judah were 500,000 men. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant. For I have done very foolishly. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and told him, and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee? Or that there be three days pestilence in thy land? Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me fall, let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan to Beersheba 70,000 men. 
And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Arana the Jebusite. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arana, the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. And Arana looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Arana went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Arana said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, to buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Arana said unto David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for burnt sacrifice, and threshing instrument, and other instrument of the oxen for wood. All these things did Arana, as a king give unto the king. And Arana said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. And the king said unto Arana, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord. My God is that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land, and the plague was stayed from Israel. Amen. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, I just want to come to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray and ask that you forgive all people of God for sins that they have committed that they don't even know of for sins that they have committed that they do know of I pray Lord God that I plead the blood of Christ over all people of God that we have stood by and watched things happen around us that are not pleasing to you, Lord Jesus. We have stood by and said nothing. We have stood by and done nothing. And I just come to you, Lord God Almighty, and ask that you forgive us as a body. Forgive us as one. Forgive us as a body of Christ. As the bride that you're coming back for, I pray, Lord God, that you forgive us of all sins that we have done, that we have not done, but stood by and watched. We pray and ask that you forgive us and lift your wrath from us, Lord God. Lift your wrath from us, Lord God. And I just pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the Spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I just felt in my spirit to pray, to pray and pray and pray. And we got to give God reverence today. That we're able to just come to the Lord God and just ask him to forgive us. You know, a lot of us, we may feel like, oh, well, I was not a part of that or, or I was not a part of this. But we are. As one body, 
the sins of the people, the things that they do. We and we just stand by and just watch. That means we're a part of it. And so I just felt in my spirit to just pray that the Lord God forgive us all as one. Forgive us. We have to recognize, open our eyes, open our ears, and hear what the voice of the Lord is saying. Hear what God is saying. And we do not want his anger to be kindled against us. Amen. I want to please the Lord God Almighty with my life. I want him to come and tell me, well done, daughter. I want him to come to you and say, well done, daughter. Well done, son. You know? Amen. So good morning if you're just coming on. This is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the entire Bible in one year. And we are in John chapter 6 now. We just read 2 Samuel 23 and 24. And we are now in John 6 verses 1 through 24. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Mm. Right now, let's just give thanks to the Lord God Almighty. Let's just sit and pause for a second and just glorify him because he is moving. He is moving. And he's working on our behalf right now. Just thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him for life. Thank him for breath. Thank him for all that he is and just glorify him. <sighs> amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, John chapter 6, 1 through 24. And we are loving the book of John. I love the book of John. Okay, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennies worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little one of his disciples Andrew Simon Peter's brother said unto him there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they among so many and Jesus said make the men sit down now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. 
Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophets should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when he was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea. And drawing nigh unto the ship, they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him unto the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. The day following when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one where whereunto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. Again, I love the book of John, and this never gets old. Like, I'm hearing so many lessons, so many instructions, so many revelations just in that what we just read alone. I'm hearing there is enough. Enough for all of us. You know, uh, because of what's going on, people are running around in a panic. They're buying up all the tissue, buying up everything, buying, buying. And God is saying there is enough for everybody. Like, He is going to take care of us. We are not going to go without. Period. We walk in the will and the plan of the Lord Jesus. We are getting into his word every day. We are obeying. We are not going to go without. And I am specifically talking to the body of Christ. To the bride that he's coming back for. We are not going to go without. So remove all fear, remove all doubt, remove all panic, and continue to trust in the Lord Jesus. Even then, he was showing the disciples, you can trust me. He was showing them, you can trust me. It even says in verse 6, this is John chapter 6, verse 6. He, it says, and this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. It says that Jesus did this just so he can show them, you can trust me. They didn't know how he was going to do it. They didn't know how he was going to feed all them men. They didn't know how he was going to pull it off. We don't know how Jesus is going to pull this off. But we know for a fact 
that he is going to pull it off. He is going to turn things around. He is, he is saying, I am enough for you. I am enough. Trust me, the Lord is saying. Trust me. Even then, when, when they was like, there's not enough food for everybody. And what did he say? Make them sit down. Make them sit down. What are we being made to do right now? Sit down. <laughs> God is saying, I got you. I got all, I, all of this. I got in control. That he is in control of everything. We can just glorify him right now for the solution to the problems. We can glorify him. We may not see. We may not can see it. But we can glorify him for it. We can glorify him for the provisions. Even if we're not seeing it. We can glorify him for the protection. We can glorify him for the healing. We can glorify him right now. Even if you don't see it. Give him his due praise. Because he got it. Just like he was letting, he was proving to the disciples, you can trust me. I got this. He's saying that right now to you. Can you hear him? Can you, can you seriously hear him? Like, listen, listen. The Lord is speaking and he's saying, I got you. I got you. Just continue to stay in my word. Stay in the word. Continue to have a communication with me. Continue to pray. Continue to praise. Continue to worship. Continue to glorify him. You continue to do what you do, what he is asking for you to do. And believe me, God is going to continue to be God. And he is going to continue to do what he said he would do. Lean on him. Lean on him, lean on his strength, lean on his energy, lean on him this morning, today. We've already prayed that he forgive us of our sins. It is done. Our sins are forgiven as a body, as, as, a, as a one unit. God is forgiving us, you know. And pray this with others. Share the video and pray this with others. And if you are a non-believer watching this video, you've been, you've been watching the people of God. You've been hearing the word. You've been hearing the praises and the worships. And you've been seeing. And you want to give your life to Christ right now. You are invited to give your life to Christ right now. All unbelievers. Just pray this prayer. Heavenly Father Jehovah God. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my transgressions. Forgive me of my iniquities Lord God. I want to know Jesus. And I ask that you become my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart, my mind, my soul, and free me of the grips of sin. Forgive me, Lord God. I believe in you. I believe in your, in your son, Jesus. I believe in the miracles. I believe that he was born of a Virgin Mary. I believe in salvation and I thank you and I glorify you that you considered my name, that you considered me on the cross, that you died on the cross, and that you rose again on my behalf. And I ask that you become my Lord and my Savior. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are praying this you are a new creature in Christ. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the family. 
The angels in heaven are rejoicing. You have just made the devil mad. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody on here just made the devil mad. That is good. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, welcome. And if you prayed this prayer, you are a newborn babe in Christ. You are a new creature in Christ. And according to Romans 10, 10, you believe with the heart, but you confess with the mouth. So go out rejoicing and confess to all that you know that you have just accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then according to John 3, 5, that unless a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So that means go find a church house. Go and get baptized by water just the same as Jesus did. Get baptized by water and the Holy Spirit will come and baptize you in spirit. Amen. And if you need any questions, you need anything, you can reach out. We are here for you. Even you seasoned Christians, I am here for you. I am here for you all. Like, I am just glorifying the Lord God Almighty because I'm telling you, God is, y'all, keep your eyes open. I'm telling you, keep your eyes open. The Lord God is moving. He's, he's, he's working. He's, he's doing things and you want to keep your eyes open. Keep continuing to train your ears to hear his voice. Go back, study the word, study, study. We've been in John. Go back and study John one, two, three, four, five, and six. Go back and study. Just continue to stay in the word and stay in God's presence. You have to stay in his presence. So glory to God. Glory to God. I really want I really want you all to really truly have this joy this joy that he is filling us with that 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 continues that we can continue to smile and and rejoice because we know we know we know we know that we know that we know that we know you know and it's an amazing amazing awesome thing to have is the joy of the Lord what it say weeping may may endure in the night but what joy comes in the morning and I'm gonna end it with that be joyous today be happy be glad and just lift your hands and just glorify the Lord God Almighty because He's doing it. He's doing it. He's working. And awesome. So, again, I'm going to invite any prayer requests. Any prayer requests, you can message me. You can uh, reach out. And, and if you have any prayer requests, you are not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. And you don't have to do life alone, period. So share, share, invite, tag if you have to. Um, and spread this word, spread the gospel, and, and just continue to be joyous in the Lord today. All right, I love you all. You all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. I'll see you 5.30 in the morning.